Network Dojo. So in my deployment, I have two Mobility Express capable LEPs. LEP2 is an 1852, LEP4 is an 1832. Right now they are in, they have Mobility Express images, but they are in CapWap mode, which means that they will never attempt to be master APs. We can see this, uh, oops, in a show version. Here's how you can tell if there's a Mobility Express capable image installed. You'll see these two lines right below the code versions. So it says AP image type Mobility Express image. And right now it is not Mobility Express capable, which means it's in CapWap mode. It will only just be a regular AP. It will never be a master AP, but it could if we flip the mode. It has the proper operating system installed. If it does not have the proper operating system installed, these two lines would just be absent from this output. Um, what do I need to do? Quit. Okay. So to flip modes, I would say AP type, uh, not CapWap, Mobility Express. If I did not have a Mobility Express image installed, I would still actually have this command, assuming I had a new enough regular AP image installed. And I could just say, oh, and download the image I need from this server, ap image dot tar, whatever the name of the AP image. It would download the, the image, flip over to Mobility Express mode. But I already have the image installed, so I just need to say flip over to Mobility Express. And I'll do the same thing on LAP4. It's in the same CapWap state with the same Mobility Express image. AP type mobility stress. So let's watch the boot process. So what's going to happen is right now it's booting the AP. This is the AP operating system that we're watching boot up here. So it's going to boot up as an AP. It's going to pull an IP address as an AP. And I am going to see if I can short circuit this. Show run include D. I'm going to make sure it doesn't learn about another controller to boot up to. So I'm going to remove option 43 here. No option 43. Show run section DCP. Okay. All right, so hopefully my AP won't uh, discover another controller to boot up to. And so what, we'll, what we should see is, okay, so it's getting close to the end of the boot process here. Um, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, it's finishing the boot process. And so eventually we'll see it, uh, pull an IP address. And then it's gonna be looking to see, okay, are there any mobility, is there, is there a current master AP out there? If not, we're gonna move into an election phase where we're gonna see, okay, if there's any other Mobility Express capable APs that are also in an election phase, we'll, we'll duke it out, see which one is gonna be the winner. Okay, there we go, we pulled my IP address. And again, this is all my AP. This is my AP operating system. So my AP has an IP address of 10.07.50. And LAP4 should be doing the same thing, but actually, oh, LAP4 is on a different VLAN. So since they're on different VLANs, they're not going to see each other. VRP only works within the VLAN. So both of these are actually going to become master APs because they're on different VLANs. Um, so rather than have that, let me flip LAP4 onto VLAN 107. I'll just reboot it. Switch port access VLAN 107. And let me reboot LAP4 because I want to show it as a backup. Let's reload. 
Oh, I think I just missed it. I did, now it's booting the <laughs> controller operating system. So as we see the controller operating system booting, looks kind of familiar, like a 5508 booting up. We see all the services booting. Darn, I was hoping to reboot this before I got to this point. Oh well. We'll just have to suffer through uh, the setup. And actually, I guess it, no, it actually won't work out right. Okay, so let's wait for this. And that's gonna, since there's no master AP that's synced its config down to this before, we're gonna have to go through the CLI uh, setup process here. So we can either do it, sorry, the setup process, we can, we can either do it in the CLI, which is very much like a 5508 with just a little bit different uh, questions, or there's actually, a, it spins up, uh, this Cisco Air Provision SSID that you can connect to with uh, WTPA2 pre-shared key. Um, and then you would get a GUI version of this, very similar in the setup, but let's just step through it. So I'll say my admin user is admin, and Dojo123, I'll call it MEWLC1, US, NTP server, nah. System time, nah. 10.07. So this has to be on the same subnet as my AP, which is a 10.07 subnet. I'll say 10.07.22 with a slash 24 and 10.07.1 is the default gateway. Do I want a DCP scope? Nope. Employee network or not yet. Guest network? No. RF parameter opt optimization? Nah. And yes, this looks correct. Okay. I gave it the initial controller config. Now, like any controller after the initial setup, we reboot, but it reboots the entire AP. So everything goes down, and then we watch the AP boots up. Again, we look to see is there a master AP. If there's not, I boot up as the master AP, but now I'm fully configured, and APs can now join up to me. Unfortunately, I gotta do the same thing over on controller four, or on LAP four, so I don't care what this is. Uh, system name, blah, no, no. I'll put a different IP address here, but we'll, we'll see what's going to happen. This is going to get overwritten from the other, con the other master AP, so we'll take note of that. No, I'm just going to answer no to everything. All right, so it's a reboot, but this is going to come back up on VLAN 107 this time. But LAP2 got the jump on it. So I'm pretty sure what we'll see is LAP2, since it came up first, it should just boot up as the master AP, unless there's, they're close enough to each other, but we'll see one win, essentially, at the end of the day. So one will become the master AP. The other one's gonna join up to it as a subordinate AP. And so whoever wins as the master AP, that is the official master AP configuration. All Mobility Express subordinate APs that join up to it will get new their controller config synced to it from the master AP. So that if the master AP ever goes away and that needs to come up as the new master AP, the config stays the same. And so we just need to wait for all this to flesh itself out. All right, and then once we get up, We'll just take a look at the, the interfaces, and we'll, we'll see that from a CLI perspective, it really looks like that we're just sitting on a 5508 controller. It's AirOS. It's the AirOS CLI. It's just that we'll see just some subtle differences on certain things. One of the tough parts, though, is that, you know what? All the commands are there. Even commands for stuff that's not supported. It's there, so it can be a little deceiving on the CLI side where it's just like, well, I can configure it, but... Um, not everything's necessarily, just because you configure it doesn't mean it's going to work. We're restricted to what's supported in Mobility Express. So, okay, my AP has finished booting. My AP persona has an IP address of 10.0.150. And then we're just going to see, is this going to become the master AP before LAP4 even finishes its boot? Or is LAP4 going to boot fast enough so that they actually have an election? We shall find out. So there's this, you know, it's waiting. It's looking for another master AP or someone to, to have an election with. But looks like, no, nope, didn't see anyone else out there. So you know what? I'm going to become the master AP. So here we go. We're booting up the controller persona at this point. 
and LAP4 was just a little late to the game, so there was no election in this case. Well, there was an election of one AP, and that was the only AP involved. But LAP4 is now going to see that, hey, there is another Master AP currently out there, so I will not become a Master AP. I'm just going to stay with my AP persona booted up. I switched you. Did I do the wrong port? Wow, I did. Int gig 107. Switch port access VLAN 107. Not 1074, Jeff. Come on. And Cisco, Cisco. Oh, come on. I'm just trying to beat the. I hate you. Okay, now I gotta suffer through this again. My bad. Okay, so uh, LAB2 has booted up. And now I can log in. So I am in the controller persona here. And here we have our basic controller CLI. Why are you going down for a restart? What did you do? Weird. Oh, and I have bogus stuff here. All right, I am going to have to just manually power cycle this. So hang on for one second, I'll be right back. Okay, I fixed my mistakes before, so unfortunately my, my poor configurations of VLANs and order of operations, I kind of messed myself up. So, we're to the point where I wanted to be. I have LAP2 as a master AP. I am in the controller interface here. LAP4 is Mobility Express capable, but it is currently just joined up to um, AP2, and they are in the same VLAN. So, what that means is that LAP4 while it's a subordinate to LAP2, it can become the master AP if LAP2 happens to go away. So, let's take a look at LAP2, and we'll look at the CLI interface, and we'll look at the GUI interface, and we'll, we'll kind of call it good. So again, this is very, you know, it's, it's iOS. When we, you know, look at our commands, it's, it's all, sorry, it's not iOS, it's AirOS. When we look at the commands, we see all the normal commands that we would typically see on a 5508. Um, if we look at my interfaces, show and summary, we'll see very similar types of interfaces. We could ignore the auto install, but we have the management interface, which is on port one. It's really the only active port on our APs here. It's untagged, has its IP address, which would have to be on the same subnet as the AP persona. We have our virtual interface, you know, but we don't have serial ports. Um, we can create dy dynamic interfaces, but if you think about it, we don't really need them because we do everything locally switched, right? Flex Connect local switching. And so normally we just do a WLAN to VLAN mapping in the Flex Connect group, which is exactly what you would want to do. Don't need dynamic interfaces for that. So usually we don't create dynamic interfaces for anything. Uh, my management interface is the AP manager. Since port one is the only possible port, I cannot create a separate AP manager um, as that would conflict with the management interface. I don't even know if it would work if I turn AP management off of the management interface. So. There's no reason not to have the management interface be the AP manager. That's just the way it works. Show AP summary. I have two APs joined up. One is itself, so the AP persona joined up to the controller persona. And then I have LAP4, which is an 1832 series AP. That's also joined up to this as well. So it's a, it's a controller here. What if I want to uh, get back to the, the AP CLI? Because again, I have both an AP and a controller running on the same hardware. This is the console port that I'm currently connected to right now. If I need to flip back and forth, I say AP Cisco Shell. This gets me over to my AP interface. And now I'm looking at my AP at this point. Now, one note, when I logged into my AP, I had to log in with not the Cisco Cisco credentials, I had to log in with actually admin credentials. One interesting side effect of Mobility Express is that when, when APs join up to a Mobility Express controller, the Mobility Express controller sets new admin credentials of all the APs that join it that match the controller's admin credentials. Whatever the first admin account you create on the initial setup, that's what every AP's admin credentials get overridden to. 
Don't know why that is, but that's, that is the way it is. And so if I want to get back to the controller interface, it tells you, you just got to log out. So let's log out and right back to the controller interface. So I can switch back and forth through the console connection. Let's take a look in the GUI. What does that look like? Well, this is going to look a little bit different than uh, what we're used to on a normal standalone controller. So HTTP colon slash slash 1007.22. Actually, I want HTTPS. Sorry. There we go. And it's going to ask me to log in. My admin credentials. So this is talking to the controller's IP address because the controller has its own IP. AP has its own IP. So I'm, I'm talking to the controller here. It just happens to be on the same hardware. And so we have really a stripped down GUI compared to what we would be used to on a 5500 series AP. So as we look through here, you know, we have some dashboard monitoring type things. You know, it's just some basic applets that we have within here. Um, if we go down to best practice settings, we see, you know, these are best practice settings and what's currently set and what's currently not set. And we get the score. Um, I don't know that it really matters here, but we're not, you know, making changes or anything like here. It's just kind of telling us, but again, this is just informational type stuff. Under wireless settings, we have the ability to configure things under the next menu items down. So we can see the AP is currently joined up here. The one with the P is the current master controller. So again, the, the master controller has itself, its AP persona joining up to its controller persona. So we can see here that this is the current master controller and then I have another AP down here. Uh, we can configure these APs by clicking on the little edit box here. So I can do things like say, you know, static IP address versus DHCP. I can configure the name of the AP persona. I can um, configure, uh, well, this is the controller side of things, but um, my radio, so I can do static, ch ch static channels, static powers, or I can just allow, you know, uh, RRM from the master AP to, to apply that down. On a subordinate AP, Again, similar types of configurations. Let me just apply this and I'll go back into here. Uh, I don't get the controller config because this is not the master AP, but that's what the that config there allowed us to change the, the IP address of the management interface. Um, but here, I, make me controller. So this is where I could say, I could force a failover to another Mobility Express capable AP. So that if I, if I see this button, it means this is a Mobility Express capable AP. And this would be saying, you know what, I want LEP4 to be the preferred controller and it will force a failover. And so when we force a failover, really what happens is, number one, we, we tell LEP4 it becomes the preferred AP, but that's not enough because we already have LEP2 as the current master AP. So what really happens is uh, LEP2 just reboots. And while it reboots, LEP4 just takes over in its stead. And then boom, LEP4 is the current master AP and it's also the preferred master. And so if they both, you know, rebooted at the same time, they could have an election and LAP4 would win at that time. So we have that ability within here. WLAN user. So if we want to do, uh, we can support local radius. So everything's centrally auth because we don't support local auth on the, the Flex Connect mode, but uh, we can have internal EAP radius authentication going. So here's where we create WLAN users to support that. If we want to configure guest WLANs, we can configure, you know, both internal um, as well as customized, meaning we can install our own custom web pages. We can, um, you know, a lot of the, the same types of configurations that we would have. It's still the same ugly thing that we're used to. So nothing really changes there for the internal uh, page types. DHCP. So we can create internal DHCP scopes for client um, connections. So for and this is for client DHCP. So clients connect up, pull DHCP addresses. Now, one rule uh, that's different with Mobility Express in terms of DHCP that, that we don't see in a regular controller. While I can create pools for my clients, so let's say I wanted to create a pool for a client VLAN 111. So, you know, VLAN 111, I would create just like you know, any other DHCP pool. 10.1.1.0. Uh, 10 
slash that. What's the first IP address? What's the last IP address? Default gateway. So standard UCP pool stuff. Um, I'll just apply. Now, I have a DCP pool for VLAN 111, which would be a client VLAN. In order for this pool to work, I have to have a DCP pool on the management VLAN. That's a pre-requirement for client. And so at a minimum, I have to have my management DCP pool, and then I can create these other client DCP pools. So the management v VLAN, uh, I'm on VLAN 107 here. But rather than a VLAN ID, it's not tagged. It's the management network. So I just check this box here. Takes the tag away. And I just put the information in for this. 255, 255, 255, 0. Same basic stuff. It's just for those tagged VLANs to work, I have to have the management VLAN. So it's just a requirement. On the management side, what can I do? I can turn on and off HTTP, HTTPS, Telnet, SSH. I can create additional administrative accounts. Basically, we have read-only and read-write. We don't have that lobby interface. Uh, we do support both Radius and TACX external authentications, but that's CLI only configurations. A lot of the configurations are only CLI. We have a minimal configurations in the GUI here. Manual set date and time, configure NTP servers, we can uh, initiate software updates. So one thing about uh, Mobility Express, a Mobility Express controller does not have a big repository of AP images. And so if an AP joins up to a Mobility Express controller and it doesn't have the same code, you know, we're running 83121. So if someone joins up with different code than this, they have to download code, right? Well, I don't have the code to download from the controller. So what can happen is the controller can essentially say, hey, download the code from this other TFTP server. It's just it doesn't have the code itself to download uh, to the APs. That would take too much, uh, too much space, I guess. Uh, some basic SNMP stuff, V2, uh, V3. We can configure V3 users down here. We can configure a single V2 uh, read-only community, a single V2 read-write community, but we can, uh, we can always add additional ones through the CLI. Basic uh, syslog type stuff. Some basic RF configurations just from some macros. Low, typical, high client density. And are we talking data or voice and data? And then based off of this, it sets a whole bunch of RRM parameters from some, again, some templates that it has. Controller tools, uh, nothing too much here. Uh, we could export the config if we wanted to back up here. And we can integrate with... Uh, Cloud CMX. So we could reach out to an external CMX server. This is a, an internet based CMX, not the local CMX server that we would have. And so this, this is really what we can do in the, in the CLI. Where did my WLANs go? WLANs, that's kind of an important one, right? You can configure WLANs. And so in here we can configure you know, basic stuff. We can turn on local profiling so we can locally profile uh, clients. We can support uh, open WPA2 pre-share key, WPA2 AO2.1x, and a number of different guest type networks. Could be uh, captive portal type stuff, CMX guests, pre-share key style guests. You know, if it's um, captive portal, we could say username, password, web consent, which is passed through, different things like that. We can, uh, assign it to a VLAN. So you know, maybe we want to put this on VLAN 111. Enable firewall. This allows us to create and apply FlexConnect ACLs to the appropriate VLAN. If we chose yes, we would basically say, you know, ACL name is what we're typing in here. And then we just add rules that are permits or denies. So it's just a GUI way of configuring an ACL. On the QoS world, we can assign uh, QoS profiles. And we can enable application visibility. We don't get application control, but we can get visibility. So we can see the stuff. We just can't take action on the different protocols and, and applications going on. So we can create a bunch of VLAN, or WLANs within here too. So uh, basically, if you don't see it in the GUI, 
you're going to have to do it in the CLI. So there's a myriad of things that we can absolutely configure in the CLI that aren't in the GUI. But again, uh, consult that document that I referenced before to see truly what's supported and what's not because it's just a long list on, on both sides of the page. So that's, I guess, where we'll leave it at Mobility Express. But again, if you can just remember those key things, you know, what's the master controller that it runs a virtual controller uh, and an AP within the same box that, um, you know, at the end of the day, every AP is a Flex Connect mode AP. Every WLAN is locally switched and every AP is in the default Flex Connect group and there can be no other Flex Connect groups. And so with that knowledge, as you configure things, um, if you configure things with that in mind, the solutions usually start to become fairly obvious to you.